dear students today we will discuss the cross section of the mid brain at the level of superior colliculus some important or significant features is will see at the level of this section the most important feature which will see at this level is the this is the third nerve nuclear this is the third nerve nuclear complex this is third nerve nuclear complex number 1 okay number 2 what we will see at this level most important structure is we will see the red nucleus which is present at this level only we will see the nucleus of the superior colliculus at this level it is uh, all these are the part of the gray matter we will see the pretectal nucleus at this level okay and mesencephalic nucleus as such in the inferior colliculus level also so at the superior colliculus level most important features which we will see in the gray matter oculomotor nerve nucleus means third nerve nuclear complex we will see the red nucleus at this level we will see the pretectal nucleus at this level and we will see the nucleus of the superior colliculus at this level they all are the gray matter content in the white matter what important structures we will see are the dorsal tegmental decussation and ventral aspect ventral tegmental decussation they are the white matter things we will see the medial lamniscus trisomenal lamniscus and spinal lamniscus as we will see as we have seen at the level of inferior colliculus but at this level we will not see lateral lamniscus as this lamniscus will end at the level of inferior colliculus and all these lamniscus they are the ascending tracts they will go from the lower centers to the higher centers so lateral lamniscus will stop at the level of ya will terminate at the level of the inferior colliculus so it will not go further upwards while the medial lamniscus trisa minor and spinal lamniscus they will go to the higher centers and reach up to the thalamus so we will discuss one by one first we will discuss the nuclear complex third motor nerve nuclear complex in the third motor nerve nucleus complex it is consist it will consist of this motor nerve nucleus will consist of it will consist of larger motor neurons and smaller motor neurons larger motor neurons they will supply the extra ocular muscles which will control our eyeball movements and smaller motor neurons they provide the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers which supply the ciliary muscle and sphincter pupillary muscle which constrict our pupil the small motor neuron is the edinger west stipal nucleus this edinger west stipal nucleus it is situated where it is situated here in the posterior lateral to the uh, in the third nerve nucleus and this will carry the preganglionic 
एडिंजर वेस्टपाल न्यूक्लियस इट विल कैरी द प्री गेंगलियोनिक पैरासिंपैथेटिक फाइबर्स विच विल प्रोवाइड या विच विल सप्लाई द सीलरिस मसल एंड द स्विंगटर प्यूपली मसल थ्रू द सीलियरी गेंगलियोन एंड दीज मसल्स विल कॉन्स्ट्रिक्ट द प्यूपिल टू दिस थर्ड नर्व न्यूक्लियस and this adinger vespal nucleus the fibers arising from these they will emerge out from these nucleus they will traverse ventrally along the tegmentum and intersect the red nucleus and they will leave the midbrain through the medial part of the crus cerebri they will leave okay so the third nerve will leave the midbrain on the ventral aspect while the fourth nerve which will arise at the level of the inferior colliculus will leave the midbrain on the dorsal aspect clear in the central gray matter one nucleus we will also found same as in the inferior colliculus mesencephalic nucleus okay so one more important thing which we will find at this level is third nerve nuclear complex okay second important thing which we will find at this level is the red nucleus this red nucleus as you see here it is oval shape mass which is situated dorso medial to the substantia nigra this red nucleus is present at the superior colliculus level only so it's a important landmark of this level this is red in color this red nucleus is red in color red or pink in color it is about 0.5 cm in diameter okay why it is red and pink in color because it is rich in iron and it is rich in its vascularity what red nucleus will do what is the function of the red nucleus the red nucleus it is considered as a integrating and the relay center integrating and relay center for cortico rubral tract cortico rubro nuclear and cortico rubro spinal tract okay it is considered as a parallel pathway of pyramidal tract okay so now we discuss about the red nucleus in detail what are the efferent and the efferent of the red nucleus this is the red nucleus which is red in color what are the efferents it receives as you see here this is the cerebral cortex motor area it receives the efferent from the cerebral cortex motor area 4 and the 6 same side the with the name of the tract cerebro rubral tract cerebral cortex se red nucleus tak the name of this tract is cerebro rubral tract it also receives the efferent from the opposite side cerebellum with the name of cerebello rubral tract cerebellum se red nucleus rubro means red nucleus it also receives the efferent from the same side globus pallidus with the name of pallido rubral tract okay it also receives the efferent from the hypothalamus from the subthalamus and from the superior colliculus it receives the same side superior colliculus 
एफरेंट विद द नेम ऑफ टेक्टो रूब्रल फाइबर या ट्रैक वाई इट इज नोन एज अ टेक्टल बिकॉज सुपीरियर कॉलिकुलर इज प्रेजेंट इन द टेक्टम ऑफ द मिड ब्रेन दैट्स वाई नोन एज द टेक्टो रूब्रल ट्रैक या फाइबर सो दीज आर द एफरेंट फाइबर्स वॉट आर द इफरेंट फाइबर्स विच विल प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम द रेड न्यूक्लियस इट will project the fibers to the spinal cord via the rubro spinal tract via the rubro spinal tract and it also convey the ya project the fibers to the motor nuclei of which nerves third nerve fourth nerve fifth cranial nerve sixth nerve and the seventh cranial nerve the name of that tract will be the rubro nuclear tract rubro nuclear tract okay it also give the fibers to the reticular formation via the reticular formation the name of that tract will be the rubro reticular tract okay then it also give the fibers to the cerebellum also with the name of rubro cerebellar tract rubro cerebellar tract it also give the fibers to the di- direct to the thalamus with the name of rubro thalamic tract to so efferents are from the red nucleus are with the name of rubro cerebellar tract to the cerebellum rubro spinal and the rubro nuclear rubro spinal to the spinal cord and rubro nuclear to the cranial nerve nuclei third nerve fourth nerve fifth nerve sixth nerve and the seventh cranial nerve nuclei to the thalamus with the name of the rubro thalamic to the reticular formation with the name of the rubro reticular and to the inferior olivary nucleus also okay so these are the efferent tracts of the red nucleus sometimes it is commonly asked as a short note about the red nucleus and what is the function of red nucleus it is considered as a integrated and the relay center of the pathways such as cortico rubro spinal tract or cortico rubro nuclear tract it also act as a relay center for the cerebello rubro spinal tract okay it is considered as a alternative pathway for the pyramidal tract it is considered as a and and by this it will facilitate the flexor muscle tone so this is about the red nucleus which is a important landmark at the superior colliculus level now we will discuss something about more about the nucleus of the superior colliculus this superior colliculus previously i told you it act as a relay center for subcortical relay center for the visual reflexes and it is connected with the lateral geniculate body through superior brachium okay so this is a very important structure which will present at this level the other nucleus which we will find at this level is a pretectal nucleus which is situated lateral to the superior colliculus nucleus this ref- nucleus is concerned with the pupillary light reflex okay now this pupillary light reflex this uh, pretectal nucleus it is present in this diagram this is the midbrain this is the tectum level this is the crust cerebri this is the dorsal aspect this is the ventral aspect of the midbrain okay this is the central gray matter central canal this is the central aqueduct of sylvius this is the pretectal nucleus this is the 
pretectal nucleus this is the edinger westphal nucleus edinger westphal nucleus and the third nerve nucleus okay as you see here this pretectal nucleus i already told you it is concerned for the pupillary light reflex how it will work it will receive the efferent from the optic tract through the optic tract this is the optic tract this is the optic nerve this is the optic chiasma this is the optic tract when we put a light in the one eye it will carry with the optic nerve with the optic chiasma with the optic tract and this light will go will reach to the pretectal nucleus via the optic tract of the same side this pretectal from this pretectal nucleus from this pretectal nucleus now the efferent will go bilaterally around the central gray matter to the both side edinger westphal nucleus now from this edinger westphal nucleus edinger westphal nucleus is act as a preganglionic parasympathetic pathway and it will supply the pupillary muscle and the sphincter pupillary muscle and will constrict the pupil so when the efferent fibers will go to the edinger westphal nucleus of both side now from the edinger westphal nucleus the reflex will go to the ciliary ganglion which is a relay station now from the this relay stations post ganglionic fibers will reach via the short ciliary nerve to the constrictor muscle and sphincter pupillary muscle and the ciliaris muscle which will constrict the both eyes so when you put the light through a torch in one eye your both eyes will constrict this is the theory behind that okay in this pretectal nucleus will play a important role now we will discuss something more about the structures present in the white matter most important structure present in the white matter at this level is the dorsal tegmental decussation and the ventral tegmental decussation which we will discuss in the next video